So he Jeremy has has one infect to spare, but Andrew doesn't have a board position. There's a hunt master, there's a wolf. We have another ink moth next to us. We have a wolf from. Yeah, Jeremy Fields. Uh, pretty cool sleeves there. Oh, it's a ring. It earlier, uh, the Hobbit coming out later this year. Brad's not going to see it. Because, I won't see it because he's afraid that it's going to get seared into his brain. And yes, eat his they're soul. running it at a very fast. Um, what is it called? Frames per second? They were at like over 300 frames per second or 400 frames per second or something. So it'll just look really good. It's not. Yeah, but it's it's at the speed that your eyes see it. That's really bad. Realize people say said stuff about this like when the radio came out and when TV came out and when computers came out. Dude, I still just... think the world's gonna end in four months. You're a crazy person. I am a crazy person. But uh, we're getting hit by a bunch of things. Wolf Run's going to pump. This is also, I don't really know why you'd attack with the Ink Moth. Oh, because you infected the Infect player. Yes. That Andrew is Ashton, awesome. Ashton, a poison player, has been poisoned himself now. Yeah, Jeremy has tied it up. Let's look at, uh, let's look at sideboards, just see how they, do you think we sideboard it? Against Wolf Run, I think you bring in the Beast Withins. And the spell Skites. Those seem like good cards. We do have two Sword of Feast of Heavens. Those are probably good in this matchup. What is Wolf Run? This is a printed out Wolf Run blue deck. His... <laughs> yep. <laughs> Either he is the most responsible person on the planet or his penmanship sucks and he knows it. Because my mean, brother it like should. It looks like his penmanship is pretty good from that DCI number. It is. He is well, just I a... I think he is a... Uh, he is a person who is... Takes what's the right term for it? It's to... Uh, He's well prepared. He's We're well going to go with well prepared. Yes. I'm going to say that he takes respect in what he does in the magic game. He's like, I'm going to a professional event. I'm going to have professional style. And he typed out his deck list. But so he has a birds in his sideboard. That's interesting. When he doesn't want a green sun for it game one, so he can. When when the when he wants his his uh, one green something to have a higher impact, he brings in the birds. It's kind of a crazy one. That's really going deep on the EV. He like figuring it all out. He's got a crazy just. His numbers are insane. Oh, he has three birds of paradise. It's when he wants the four. He has a primordial hydra in his deck. He has a primordial hydra. He has a thunder mahal card, a vorapid, a thron, a thraytus, a solemn. What do you what do you ever go Both with these players hydra? are four zero, right? I I don't know. They're probably three one. There can't be that many four zeros left in the tournament, right? I'd say what five or six tables worth. No, more than that. You've got to figure nine rounds, and I mean they're going to be X one ones that miss. They are yeah. XO. So okay, let's figure it out. There's three hundred fifty people. So then there's 175, and then round three, after round three, there is uh, about um, 80, and then so there's 40. Okay, okay, so so there's 20 tables of XOs. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a, like a lot more than... No, there's 10 tables of XOs. So five was close, because this is after round... That's after that's round five. one, two, three, four. So after round five, there will be five XO tables. There'll no, be 10 that's not players. True. How is that not true? So we'll start with that. So then everybody's the same thing. So that's 100 and... 175. Say... Yeah, it's so like 178 tables. Sure. Start the day. 178. So that's right. round one. So then round two. And now we're at here. We're at 89. Yeah. How many tables do we have? We have 45. Or 44. Or 44. It could go either way. Then it's 22. Let's round down here. Then it's 11. It's 22. So after this round, there will be 11, 11 undefeated players. 11 undefeated tables. Players. No, that's tables. No, because we started at 355 people. We don't go to 11 tables. Yeah, that's five. right. I am right, and I got my math yeah, down perfect. You are wrong. All right, game start, and we're done arguing. I won. You lost. Let's play magic. 
I think we're not understanding each other. I think we're talking about different rounds. I'm right, you're wrong. All right, turn one glisten out for Andrew. Jeremy's gonna have to find an answer for this. He has three bonfires. He has two tomatoes. In his he has three pillar of flames and two whip flares. He needs to find these cards quickly. He doesn't have any ancient grudges, which are really important in this matchup. Inkwon Nexus comes down potentially to block, but that's not what your ramp deck wants to do, is trade early ink moths for creatures. Uh, does Andrew want to play? I think playing an Icar Claw Mirror is fine here. Whip Flare doesn't kill both of them. This opens him up to getting Whip Flared. I'm actually kind of surprised that he chose to go to Glistener Elf there out of all of his options. It seems like the. the like you don't use your mana the most efficiently, you open yourself up to whip flare more than that and things, you deal less infect than you would for the other card. I think it might actually just be like the the worst of his lines. Well let's see how you know. Great. Unique line. Interesting play con. Interesting play con. Let's see how let's it works, see how it out, works for out for you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so a green sun zenith. Form one. It's going to fetch up a Birds of Paradise for Jeremy Fields. It's a sweet old Birds of Paradise, too. It doesn't even have, like, the addition on it. Yes, it is a mana bird. It has been summoned. Andrew Rashton activating the Ink Moth Nexus. Getting in with his whole team. In fact, It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. That's the official line. Choi with the dunk. Yes. <laughs> Figured it out for us. Oh, chooses to just mutagenic rot this. Yeah, get that damage in right away. Like, if you're you're a burn deck, you're a combo deck, just get it in. Don't save it. You'd much rather deal as much effect now. Even if the board gets cleared, then you can use that, in, that ink moth later to deal the full damage. There's a bonfire. Ooh, so now bon bonfire miracle is so gross because now if Jeremy still has another land, he can block that ink moth on that like trade ink moth, and that is just so strong. Yeah, it's absolutely huge. If he's able to trade ink moths, Possible blessing is going to say nope. Sorry, not going to do that. And now this is a great time for Andrew to just to hit him with. It was a great turn to actually just hit him with the Ink Moth. Maybe Jeremy trades, thinking that he doesn't have any more permanents. He gets the Stone Rain him. And the Stone Rain is huge Yeah, there. against a ramp deck? Oh, for sure. Oh, man. But it was not today. Oh, man. Over to our left, Ruben is deck teching the sweet Stuffy Doll deck. I want to be part of that. I'll be right back. I'm going to go ruin that deck tech real quick. I'm going to go ruin this deck tech real fast. <laughs> All right, bonfire for one. So now Andrew's like, no, I'm going to pay two life, three total, and give it protection from red. Andrew's going to drop to 14, but he gets to keep the super precious Iker Claw Mare. And if he draws a Rancor, this game is going to be tough. Let's see what he got. Yeah, a Rancor would be really nice for Andrew Ashner right now. Ruben, did he win that shot? And that kind of looks like it's a Rancor. Yeah, and just for you guys at home, that he did draw the Rancor. Wow, I've been really good at call shotting lately. You have been insane at call shotting, huh? <laughs> so just for you guys at home, Stuffy Doll guy, I, I still don't remember his name, it's probably on here somewhere. Uh, he actually won his last round, so he is going to 4 and 1. Very nice. So Rancor hits the table, Inkmoth's gonna get activated, he's gonna attack. This presents lethal, this means Jeremy is gonna have to block with that Inkmoth Nexus. I don't think you're supposed to activate the Inkmoth. Yeah, you, you can't represent lethal if you don't. This represents lethal. This forces yeah, the ink off the block. Yeah, this forces the ink I guess. I mean... 
I'd rather just have the Ink Moth in play, that way if yes, he kills the Ink Moth Mirror, then I can just activate Ink Moth and Rancor and win. I agree, I, I, I would have just attacked with Ink Moth, dropping his opponent to one. Yeah. Tomino now gets to lock it down. Yeah, and I mean, had he... Well, no, because he could have just blocked the Icker Claw. Oh, he couldn't block the Icker Claw. He would have had to take three. Yeah. No, he couldn't block it because that would have been lethal if you blocked Icker Claw. Yeah. Yep. So did the other way, he would have won. Yes. And now a bonfire is just going to end this game. Does Jeremy have a bonfire? Yes, he has his third bonfire in hand. Well played by Jeremy, ably, enabling himself to uh, you know, win this game despite being in an extremely difficult situation. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I was just watching the deck tech <laughs> that'll soon be on the website of the mono red stuffy and all that. Now with solid control of the game, gonna ramp in growth, thin out some of these lands from his deck. Hopefully, uh, he really wants to activate this Tamiyo ultimate because once you do that, it's not that great against Infect. All your cards are like primeval titans. Yeah, I guess it's probably you could probably just rather have it in play. Ramp sure growth, ramp growth, ramp growth, ramp growth. <laughs> that would really be a ramp and growth. Lots of ramp. <laughs> All right, so Andrew is just like shrug. I sure do wish I played that a little tighter. <laughs> then this game would have been over. This game would have been much different. Yeah. All right, so let's see if Jeremy has any monstrous creature to play to end this game. And Andrew's suffering. Well, let's say he's activating his Kessig Wolf run to pump up that bird in paradise. That's the only line we have? Yep. Andrew, you're going to take three, get a 13. And Jeremy looking for a miracle. I think he wanted to ultimate his Tamir with the Miracle, but it's still, it's, I don't think it's going to matter. Andrew would have to drop two creatures with Infect to get around this Tamir lock. Oh, there's a Temporal Mastery that's going to let him untap. And with that untap, he does have the opportunity to ultimate his Tamir if he wants to. I don't even think you need to. No, I wouldn't. But just, yeah, just ultimating it to me feels so good. And he's like, dude, I'm on camera. Yeah, and I have a ponder. <laughs> and I have a ponder. Oh, he has a ponder in his hand? <laughs> then you definitely ultimate it. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to infinite ponders. Oh, wait, what's he doing? That's not how temporal mastery works, my friend. I think he thinks that's what it does, but it doesn't. Wait, what? <laughs> I think he just attacked with the birds. It's a bold strategy, Con. Let's see how it works out for him. How can you just not... If you have infinite ponders... Yeah, why don't you just ponder like five ponder times Ponder until you have turn. an insane board, yeah. <laughs> You just ultimated a Tamiya. Don't kill him with your birds. That is style points, too. But you get to ponder your card out. Why are you not wasting all your blue doing that? Ponder comes back. All right. Now he's, he's got it. He's, got it. he's yeah. figured it out. Oh, we're going to keep the ponder. <laughs> he's like, Shuffle that away. You don't need that ponder. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. I know. It's just a deck card. He has a red sun in his hand? He has a red sun that he could just burn him twice. 
Oh, he has red sunscreen on his head? I guess so. That's what. Why is he just aiming it? I don't know. Come on, you have a. You have a Tamiya Ultimate. You just do that. That's like the coolest way to do it. I don't want You find your Thought Scour, and then you start drawing for a turn. Or for a blue man. So he's just going to cast Blue Sun to keep the Hunt Master from flipping. Or uh, Mutagenic Growth from the Burnout. Or sorry, yeah, yeah. What did I say, Hunt Master? I think you said Green Sun. It's oh, sorry. Really relevant. No worries. Mutagenic Growth. Yeah, so, uh... Andrew Ashton. Able to win this game, but unable to figure out the correct line. And now we found Red Sun Zenith. And that's going to be it. That's it. Andrew was put out of his misery. The ultimate to me out. Didn't really do much ultimating. But uh, we at least got to see Ponder, 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 Ponder. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Uh, I definitely love ultimating to me out. How many times the most times you've cast Ponder in one turn? Uh, three times. Hey everyone, welcome back to the booth. Really I'm Brad Nelson. Three? I've never ultimated to me out. Well, I... I Without ultimating it's me, I've cast Ponder probably like eight times in one turn before. Cool. I've done it against against people who, have, who are in this room now. In what deck? Pyromancer Ascension. Okay, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, JBL was one of the first people.